Welcome back to the Rich Eisen Show. All right, we're here in New York City. Joining me right now for the Honda Dream Garage Spring Event Insider Report is the man who has been with NBC Sports uh, with the Football Morning in America column now, uh, coming up on a year since he's uh, he moved over there. Yeah. Uh, the also the host of the Peter King podcast and his uh, Football Morning in America slash Monday Morning Quarterback column has been must read stuff for decades. Good to see you, Peter King. How are Thank you? Thank you, Rich. Great to be here. You bet, uh, man. I-, I said that I spent a half an hour before the show taking in this <coughs> this long read from Bleach Reports, Tyler Dunn on the Packers, and you said it would took you the entire train ride down here. Yeah, I took City. the subway down from the Upper West Side, and I started at the beginning. And I finished it right when I got off at Houston Street, so I, it was kind of good. Yeah, and I'm, 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 I'm glad you didn't miss your stop. This, <laughs> yeah. this is one of those reads it where was, it's just, it was it's just, a, It was a great story by Tyler. In, in, journalism, in a journalism sense, sense, Rich, the one thing I really admire about it is that Bleacher Report obviously gave Tyler Dunn the time to do it. This is no one- or two-week story. This is, just from reading this story, this is a two- to three-month story investigative story on what went wrong in Green Bay and the stuff that he has and the people he talked to. The unfortunate part of the media today yes. is that there's such a demand to fill the space and such a demand to feed the monster of NFL coverage 24-7, 12 months a year, that very often really good reporters are told, you got to write five stories this week. And you don't have time to devote to a story like Tyler Dunn obviously did. So kudos to Bleacher Report for giving him the time. And Tyler Dunn is one of the young stars in our business. It's a great story. All right, so um, let's dig into what you obviously have been around and know about the Packers organization for all these years and and what, what rang most true or what, what came – what, what, what did you take from this long read? Well, the two things that occurred to me right when I finished the story are Mike McCarthy's going to have a hard time getting a coaching job. I mean, first of all, if there are eight coaching jobs, I think there are eight coaching jobs open this year. And if one team interviewed him and the team who he worked with, who now is the management team in Cleveland, didn't interview him, that's telling to me. Very, very telling. And um, I think the other thing is going forward – Will Mike McCarthy become Brian Billick? Hmm. Will he become this guy who won a Super Bowl and everybody said, yeah, you know, good coach, but didn't get another shot? I mean, Brian Billick really wanted another shot to prove that the Ravens were wrong in parting ways with him, and he never got the shot. Now, will Mike McCarthy get the shot? And the other thing that rang true to me is that, remember, you know, and just recently we found out that Mike McCarthy, or that uh, Mark Murphy, you know, who runs the coaching search now post Mike McCarthy, that that Mark Murphy basically didn't use Aaron Rodgers as as a sounding board, as hey, what do you think, Aaron? What would you think if we hired uh, this guy who was the offensive coordinator at Tennessee, uh, Matt Lafleur? What would you think of this? Nothing. He never asked him for any input at all. And now, after reading Tyler's story, it becomes painfully clear why Mark Murphy would not ask Aaron Rodgers because, and again, look, you know, this is not my story. This is Tyler Dunn's story. But if Tyler Dunn's story is to be believed, and I buy it, you know, obviously Mark Murphy would Mm. be skeptical in the opinions of Aaron Rodgers based on reading this story. Well, and then... So let's put a pin in that for a second here. So they bounce Mike McCarthy when they fall to four, seven, and one. Four weeks to go. They can go on some sort of run here, finish eight, seven, and one. Is that I'm just going through Mark Murphy's decision making here to tell McCarthy to go out and, and But they leave. stunk at the time. They did. They but stunk. I, but I there's mean, no way I, I mean You don't think that there's no no, no, no one seeing what no. you read in this article no saying way. that we absolute I, I would have done the same thing that Mark Murphy did. I, I read Mike McCarthy's comments that, it, you know. That they it was, did him dirty. Yeah, they did him all that stuff. This team, over the last two and a half years, is the most disappointing team in football, and no one is close for second place. <laughs> Rich, just think of this. This team in the last 45 games, all right, is 21-23-1. The vast majority of those games Aaron Rodgers played so it wasn't like Aaron Rodgers missed two-thirds of those. It wasn't like these are all Brett Hundley's losses. 
a lot of these losses are on Mike McCarthy and Aaron Rodgers. They are a sub-500 team over two and a half years with Aaron Rodgers playing. It's just, it's, I, I hey, I, I, I empathize with McCarthy, and I like Mike McCarthy, but they, he had no cause. He had no reason to think that uh, this is a bad decision to fire him with four games left. Peter King here in the Honda Insider Report here on the Rich Eisen Show. So what what of LaFleur coming in now? First head coaching job in the National Football League. You know, the one thing I would say, Rich, is that the people who know Matt LaFleur are a little bit worried for him because he's not a commandant. He doesn't enter a room and he's and be a commanding presence. And I remember talking to Bill Parcells uh, in January, and Bill Parcells, some of these guys, he literally does not know. So he doesn't know for sure who, you know, what kind of people they are. But he said, I'm a little bit worried about the NFL decision-making process when coaches are hired because uh, maybe people think that that their genius is on one side of the ball or other. He's not, he wasn't saying that, oh, it's this whole Sean McVay thing. He, he wouldn't care if it was defense, you know, if it was, if it was somebody who was a brilliant guy on defense. He said, you know, you have to, you really have to. And the reason why Tony Dungy struggled to get a job for a long time is that people think he couldn't. Wayne Weaver, Jacksonville Jaguars. I want to hire Tom Coughlin because he can command a room. You know, and then you go, you listen to Tony Dungy's people yeah. after Tampa Bay and Indianapolis, and he walks into a room and you could hear a pin drop. He just was a quieter guy. But that's the thing I would be concerned about, and we'll see how it goes. But Matt LaFleur it doesn't have the reputation of being this commanding presence kind of guy, which I still think as a head coach you need. Well, according to this article, that there was really no changing – Aaron Rodgers' mind with McCarthy because it went right. all the way back to the 2006 that's, that's draft. That's crazy, man. That is that's crazy. Now look, I'm not. I'm, Which I am, Lafleur doesn't have on his resume. Right, I understand that, but that particular story, I don't doubt the story. But if it's true, which I have never heard one time, but I don't doubt it. But if it's true, that is crazy talk. That's utterly crazy. And if Aaron Rodgers resented him because of that. Not cool on Aaron's part. Well, I don't know. Because my, and, and, my, and my take on that, though, is why is it not cool for Aaron Rodgers to do that, but it's cool for Brady to say, everybody passed on me, I'm 199th overall, and I'm going to take it out on everybody, and that's my fire. And that if he does sit there and he thinks, this guy never liked me from the beginning. That, and, I, and if but, he doesn't agree with the play calling, he doesn't agree with this or that, the other, this guy never liked me from the beginning. But it's how a tough can you thing say he never – I mean, that's – you sound like a player. Okay, you really do. Oh, he never liked me. Mike McCarthy is paid by Mike Nolan and I forget, was it Trent Baalke? It wasn't Trent Baalke. Whoever the GM was at right. that time, Scott McLuhan, I really forget who it was. But he's paid by those people to say, who do you think is the better quarterback? And he obviously thought at the time that Alex Smith was the better quarterback. Now, could uh, Aaron Rodgers be angry about that to this day? Of course he could. But in my opinion... It's hardly a realistic way to approach life, in my opinion. You know, if, if uh, you know, I applied for jobs coming out of college and, you know, the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette didn't hire me out of college. So, and the Cincinnati Inquirer did. Did I ever say, I'll show you Pittsburgh Post-Gazette and I hate them to this day? I mean, that's, that's I, I don't know. It's just not my thing. Well, I mean, <laughs> if it is his thing, the reason why I bring it up here is that that would have nothing to do with Matt LaFleur. Zero. Right. They're coming in, they're coming in right here where Rodgers is 35. But he Rich, knows he's got Rich, a five-year... Don't, don't you think right. that Mike McCarthy, had he been... You know, I, I Chris Sims, you know, formerly a Bleacher Report, now at NBC, told me in the last spring when we were talking about this that Mike McCarthy's defenses or offenses basically were day one right, West Coast offense. Right. Very, very old, nothing new and exciting and imaginative. And he he can't believe that they were so primitive. This is Chris Sims. Yes. And so I can't I can't believe for a second that if Aaron Ro that if that if Sean McVay yes. passed on Aaron Rodgers and Sean McVay became the coach of 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 Aaron Rodgers 
that to this day, Aaron Rodgers would say, yep, Sean McVay always hated that guy because 13 years ago he passed on me. It's it just, it's not realistic. What's realistic is, and I buy, do buy this, that he thought that Mike McCarthy was not helping him become a better football player. Okay, so then LaFleur comes yeah. in when the uh, off-season workout program begins, I imagine next week, because he's a new coach, he gets new players. He finally gets to sit this down. This week, I think, right? Right, with, with Aaron Rodgers. We'll, we'll, we'll look at that right now. I think and, it's this week, yeah. Right, so so he finally gets to sit down with Aaron Rodgers. LaFleur yeah. and Rodgers gets to sit down. If Aaron Rodgers shows up this week, and I don't know that he is or he isn't, but when they finally sit down, I think my gut feeling is that Rodgers will be impressed with LaFleur's mm -hmm. offense, I think, because LaFleur, uh, you know, is a is obviously a disciple of Sean McVay, and Sean McVay believes that everything new is great. And so Aaron Rodgers is totally going to buy into that. Now, you know, uh, LaFleur had a, had a checkered season in Tennessee, you know, a checkered season, and it wasn't all great at all. And the quarterback play was certainly not great. So again, I'm not I'm yeah. not looking to say this is going to be trouble at all. I'm just saying I don't know how it's going to come out. Right. So I, I'm going to give you a choice here, one of two choices. Yeah. Because this is the sports talk radio thing. You, there's no such thing as gray air in sports talk radio. <laughs> What's more likely? We look back five years from now. Aaron Rodgers, sensitive, stubborn guy, who just sabotaged Matt Lafleur and didn't win another championship in Green Bay. And, and then we look back and say it wasn't McCarthy's fault. It was Aaron Rodgers just being so difficult. Or LaFleur and Rodgers flourish together. They realize that they need each other. And it becomes, it was McCarthy's issue. And they win Well, I don't think it's, I, I would choose the latter. Okay. But not saying, well, it was McCarthy's issue. Because I do think that Rodgers and McCarthy share responsibility for what has happened in the last few years. But... I just think that Aaron Rodgers understands that he signed there in Green Bay. They're not going to show him the door. He's not going to pull an Antonio Brown. And in my opinion, I think that in, sometime in the next five years, the Packers will win a Super Bowl. Okay. Peter King here on the Rich Eisen Show. The coach, the new head coach uh, under the most pressure coming up this year would be... Freddie Kitchens. I mean, he's gone around. from being America's darling, a guy who 13 months ago was hired by Todd Haley to be his running backs coach because he needed a running backs coach, not because, oh, this guy's a brilliant play caller. You know, he sort of, you know, just sort of almost lucked into being the offensive play caller because he, he knows the quarterback position so well, and Hugh Jackson worked his way out of a job. So... And, and, hey, Freddie Kitchens absolutely unequivocally, uh, you know, uh, should be the coach of this team. And he proved that he belonged. So he deserves it. Don't get me wrong. But all of these improvements, it's almost like if the Browns win 10 games and they're a wild card team and they lose the wild card game, it's almost like it would be a crushing disappointment right now with mm. what everybody thinks about the Browns. And look, I think the Browns have made all the right moves. I I mean I covered them last year rich on draft time and I knew and I knew totally why they picked the quarterback and Baker Mayfield was the right choice at the time. There's no revisionist history here and he's proven to be a very good choice. And now they've got more pieces in place. So there's a lot of pressure on Kitchens. By the way, I think if they win 10 games, go to the playoffs, and lose their first wild card game, it's always difficult for a first-time quarterback in the in, in the playoffs to win his first playoff game. Uh, I, I think that would be actually a very good first year for Freddie we'll Kitchens. We'll see. May, and, maybe, I, and maybe that's how it'll turn out. But me looking at it right now, right? I mean, it's almost like, well, the Browns should be on in primetime five times. Well, Sunday true. night should foot, but you know should have them on twice and all that. And well, it's, that'll happen. No, it's not going to happen. You don't think no. them versus New England's going to be on a Sunday night? I don't. Think, I don't think it'll be the I, first one. Or or them versus uh them them versus the 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 Jets, for instance. When when I think Odell's coming back into well, MetLife, and well, okay, you know you wouldn't want to see what something I'm saying, like that. What I'm saying is. 
for the last four years, I sat with Howard Katz on schedule making day. Yeah. This is only my guess. Sure. I have no inside it's information. It's an educated guess. Yes, it's, it's an educated guess. Yeah. But my feeling is last year, the San Francisco 49ers yeah. were the Cleveland Browns in all ways. Kyle Shanahan and Jimmy Garoppolo, they're going to win the division. They're going to win 12 games, blah, 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 There's blah. There's a lot of flexing. And 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 right now, you look back, they got four primetime games. Right. And they got flexed out of their Sunday night games, right? They did. Yeah. yeah. They, they did not play on Sunday night because the quarterback got hurt. And I'm not saying that's what's going to happen, but that's why I would put the over-under at four – and I would put the over under on Sunday night at one okay. because you all and one being a home game sure. in Cleveland. I do not think Cleveland at New England will be the opening game of the season. I don't think so either. OK, I mean, my guess is it'll be Dallas. I, that's just my guess. But the other thing I would say is I think the NFL will want to put the Browns on Sunday night at home. Yes. Fairly early in the season, maybe against Pittsburgh. Maybe against Baltimore, but against a team that there will be a tremendous uh, verve and excitement in the city for. Wow, we're on Sunday night football for the first time in a hundred years. That's what I think. I like Baltimore because I think the Lamar Jackson uh, versus Baker Mayfield twice a year is great. Obviously, the Week Seventeen was fantastic. It was a great, yeah. My choice for the opening night is Pittsburgh at New England. Could be because I want to see what Pittsburgh looks like. Yeah. Without Le'Veon Bell, without Antonio Brown, night one in New you know, England. Everybody, everybody said, to, I bet I got 20 emails uh, after I said, I don't think it's going to be Kansas City and New England. And I there were two reasons why it's not going to be Kansas City and New England, in my opinion. It's been Kansas City and New England on Sunday night football for two straight years. Right. Remember, opening day 2017. Yes. And then mid-season 2018, plus... The mo the biggest marquee matchup in all of football right now is Tom Brady and Patrick Mahomes, the old and the new. Yes, sir. And NBC had it last year. I got to tell you something. I will be shocked if Howard Katz gives it to NBC, NBC gives it to us again this year. That's all just right. my guess. Last one for you here, Peter King. You said Freddie Kitchens has the most pressure on him of any first-time uh, head coach. What if the Cardinals go ahead and give Cliff Kingsbury – Kyler Murray. I mean, that's a huge amount of pressure lot, there. It, right? it would put a lot of pressure on him, but there was going to be pressure on him anyway because so many people look at him and say, how can a guy who had a losing record in college and get fired in college and have probably one of the worst five defenses in all of major college football over a five-year period? Never could build a defense, ever. And how can that guy get a head coaching job in the NFL walking off, of, you know, walking out of getting fired? So I'm not saying that he, they won't take him and there won't be a lot of pressure on him. There will be. There will be a tremendous amount of pressure on him. But I always view a first-year quarterback, no matter how much hype there is, right. I view it, it a team winning three games, a team that had an awful defense and no offensive line. There's going to be pressure on him, but they're not a very good team. So I, I don't... I, it's not like in Cleveland, where I think the majority of Cleveland Browns fans, majority, expect that they will win the division this year. I don't think anybody expects, if the Arizona Cardinals pick Kyler Murray, that they'll win the division. All right, a couple more minutes left here uh, with Peter King. Um, so have you uh, met anybody since the Combine, any breathing human being since the Combine, that thinks Kyler Murray is not going to be drafted number one overall by Arizona. No, but you know, again, that's that's sort of that's recency bias to the nth degree because look, Rich, I was saying this to somebody the other day. Now that the draft is on ABC as well as NFL Network and ESPN, mm -hmm. there's going to be more live television coverage of the draft than there is of the presidential election mm. on election night. It's totally preposterous. But do you think that the NFL, if they haven't said anything yet, do you think the NFL won't at some point sidle up to Michael Bidwill of the Arizona Cardinals and say, whatever you do, do not breathe a word to anyone about what you're going to do. And let's not be dangling uh, Josh Rosen out in trade talks 
a week before the draft. Well, they can't because they got to they got to make sure Kyler Murray is a living, breathing human being at the moment they pull the trade. Yeah, and, as and, soon as they get him. But I mean, but but and and again, I I guess I would also make this point. I guess I would make this point. I think that it is most likely, although I'm not, I I don't have any hard and fast reasoning, but I think it's most likely that Rosen would go to Washington or the Giants. If he goes to one of those two teams, you've got Bruce Allen, who is excellent at keeping secrets, and Dave Gettleman, who's pretty good at it too. <laughs> okay? So, so if you have those two guys, yeah. it would okay. be possible for Steve Kime five days before the draft or three days before the draft to Pull say, give me your best offer by 6 p.m., on Thursday, mm -hmm. give me your best offer for Ky for uh, Josh Rosen, and I might call you that night. Okay. I like it. Uh, ask him the poll question before we send him out the door. Chris? All right, Peter. Who do you blame for the Packers' fall to mediocrity? Mike McCarthy, the front office, Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I mean, it's a classic. Everybody deserves it. There's not a person. You know, that that's a talk radio question right there. That's why you came and up they with all, it. Right? I, and I, I, can't, I can't answer the question. I'm going to chicken out totally because I don't think it's an answerable question. I think if you ask me to give percentage on that, I would say, I'd say, you know, probably 40% Thompson because I think he really got predictable. You don't build a team one way. Right. You don't build a team all the way through the draft. I think Preston Smith, Zadarius Smith, is a great uh, free agent, you know, mm -hmm. daily double for this team this year. Uh, and then, but I also think that McCarthy and, and Rodgers deserve blame. I cannot believe that I'm saying that the Green Bay Packers, with most of the time Rodgers playing, have been under 500 for two and a half years. That's insane. So he's insane. choosing the front office. If it's 40% there Got and it. he splits the other two between 50, it's 30%. 30, right, yeah, but, uh, but it's the front office, but... Ish. Barely, Front office barely. Ish. It's it's Ted Thompson by a nose in the Belmont in the a mile and a half Belmont Stakes with Aaron Rodgers and Mike McCarthy down the right stretch. next to down him. Down the stretch and down the stretch they come at Peter underscore King here on the Rich Eisen Show. The Rich Eisen Show weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.